I'm Mark. And I'm Josh. And this is Alter Ego Comics TV for the week of August 31st, the launch of the new DC-52. Dun, dun, dun! And the end of the old DC Universe. So, we will kick things off with Justice League number one by Jeff Johns and Jim Lieb, the most anticipated book of the week. Um, there are only two DC books shipping this week, so... Uh, the most anticipated DC book shipping this week. <laughs> Actually, the most anticipated book. And it did not disappoint. I, I got to be honest with you, when I, I read this yesterday... And I read a lot of other stuff yesterday, too. And after I read it, I wasn't sure if it was going to be my pick of the week or not. I mean, it was kind of a no-brainer that it was going to be pick of the week. It's Jeff Johns. It's Jim Lee. It's the birth of the new Justice League. Um, but I had to stop and think about it. And as I, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, yes, it does deserve to be pick of the week. And here's why. Um, it's, it, takes place, it takes place five years before, or does it? Yeah, five years before the rest of the new 52, with the exception of Action Comics, which takes place in the past at some point. Uh, so we're seeing younger versions of these characters. Uh, the main, char main characters in the first issue are Batman, Green Lantern, Superman, and Cyborg. Not Cyborg, he's not Cyborg yet, so Vic Stone. Um, and the Green Lantern is very Ryan Reynolds-ish. He's very cocky, uh, which is the way Hal was in the beginning. Um, and at first it didn't work for me because I'm used to the old way. <laughs> but, again, the more I thought about it, I read it again, and it, it actually works really well. So you get kind of a, a cocky Green Lantern, you get a, a dark and brooding Batman, uh, you get Vic Stone before he's Cyborg, so we get to see him become Cyborg in this new version of the DC Universe, which I'm excited about. And the number one reason that I like this book and that I'll make it pick of the week it should not be counted as a negative, but it really is an all-ages book, or I should say a 12-and-up book. I can give this book to my 11-year-old, and he can read it, and there's nothing objectionable in it. And that's what DC needs to do, because I started reading comics at 10. You were reading comics probably at a young age, and we stuck with them, and we grew with them. There's plenty of dark and gritty and adult stuff out there for people to read. There's not a lot of stuff that's mainstream that kids can read. And by kids, again, I'm talking kind of 11, 12 and up. So, yeah, there's, there's a dam in here, there's a hell in here, but they're going to hear that watching any TV show <laughs> right now. And if they go to see these movies, they're going to hear that. But there was nothing else objectionable. So, DC, way to go by making a book that we can give to a younger audience that will be just as enjoyable by an older audience. And I hope that that trend continues, at least with Justice League. It doesn't obviously have to happen with the entire line. But I hope that continues with Justice League. Next up, we've got Incredible Hulks, 635. This is the last issue of Incredible Hulks. This is also the last Hulk book by Greg Pak, who's been doing it for five and a half years, roughly, since Planet Hulk and Seven, just before that. maybe. A it's long, a long, long time. time. And it's all been very awesome. Uh, and this is a nice conclusion both to the storyline that we had going on with the uh, Wish Machine and the Hulk trying to get what he wants uh, out of with magic, and also to the larger Hulk story arc. And it does a great job of setting up the new upcoming Hulk number one that we'll see in a few months. In October. In Hulktober. Hulktober is it called. is. <laughs> Ultimate Comics Hawkeye number one of four. This is written by Jonathan Hickman with art by that guy. Someone Sandoval. Why don't you put your first names on the cover? <laughs> If you liked uh, The Ultimates last week when it came out by Hickman, and we did, and both of us were in the kind of anti-Ultimates camp because the last couple versions weren't all that great, uh, Hickman's Ultimates is very good, and Ultimate Hawkeye t is a parallel story to what's going on in Hickman's Ultimates book. So if you bought that, if you liked it, you're going to like this. We've got Secret Avengers number 16. This is uh, the first issue by uh, fan favorite writer Warren Ellis. we got art by Jamie McKelvey. And uh, we see a slightly pared-down version of the team. There's basically only four members. You've got Moon Knight, Beast, Natasha, and Steve Rogers, Super Soldier. And uh, it's kind of a fun book. You, you do get a little bit of recapping introductory stuff, but you got a lot of great Beast kind of being smart and witty and joking around. But you've also got uh, Natasha. They're exploring a, an underground facility under Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, that was built by the, uh, yes, Raise the Roof, Ohio was built by the Servant Society, so there's a lot of fun Russian stuff and blooming and nuclears, and it was a lot of fun. If you like Warren Ellis or if you've enjoyed The Secret Avengers, it's definitely worth a look. Amazing Spider-Man 668, Spider Island continues. This is a great series. I cannot wait for this to, for the next issue to come out. It's going to read great in collected edition. 
uh, but we still have copies of, of the single issues available. This, I think, is going to go down as one of the great Spider-Man stories of all time. I'm loving it. We have Herc 6.1. Uh, <laughs> I hate to say it, but this should have been Herc number one. This does a great job of setting up where he is now, what's happened to bring him to this point where Hercules is depowered and defending Brooklyn, New York. And if you've ever been a fan of kind of the more lighter side of Hercules and the fun, adventure be a hero, street level stuff, it's absolutely worth a look. One of the other big number ones this week is Angel and Faith, number one from Dark Horse Comics. The entire Buffy family is now back under the Dark Horse roof. Uh, Angel and Spike were previously over at IDW, but now we get a lot of continuity. They're saying that this is part of Buffy Season 9, so there's going to be a Buffy Season 9, number one, which comes out in the next couple of weeks. And Angel and Faith, again, will be a parallel book to that, also under the banner of Season 9. Really enjoyed this. This was almost pick of the week. This was the one that, that almost knocked out Justice League. Uh, and I, ha I didn't read the end of Buffy Season 8, and I still was able to jump into this and get it and like it. There are some spoilers in here for the end of Buffy Season 8, so fair warning, but we do have uh, those volumes available for you to check out. Either way, I think you're going to like it. Written by Christos Gage, who's doing a great job on Avengers Academy, uh, and the, the writing is really solid. He gets the characters. The artwork is excellent by Rebecca Isaacs. Uh, really great, great book. You should check it out. On the trade front, we have Planet of the Apes, Volume 1. Uh, now, this collects the new Planet of the Apes series from Boom. That's uh, This is the first four, four issues, but it's nine ninety nine, so it's a great way to check out the series. And uh, like a lot of people, I was a little reticent to check it out because the old movies are classics, but they're a little campy for a modern audience. The more recent uh, movie with by Tim Burton was just atrocious, and uh, this doesn't appear to have anything to do with the rise of the Planet of the Apes. But if you like science fiction, if you like war stories, if you like apes, apes, it's really, really good. It's it's a story that takes place chronologically apart from all of the other stuff. It's in the history before Taylor has come back by hundreds, thousands of years, fifteen hundred years, fifteen hundred years, and it, it does a great job of characterizing the society with apes and humans on the rise. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's similar to um, the old X Men books where they use uh, these differences between these races to speak about a more broad thing that we go on in the world with racism and prejudice and whatnot. But it's just a lot of fun and, and angry apes on horses and excellent read. And also, if you like that, issue five of the new Planet of the Apes that follows right after the end of the trade came out this week, and it is only a dollar to check out. So totally worth your money. It's the beginning of a new story arc, so if you haven't read Apes, you can jump in with a dollar issue or pick up the trade. Last week I talked about Echoes and actually had a chance to read it. Um, I, I was going by Buzz last week, but this was awesome. If you like uh, crime procedurals like Law and Order or CSI, uh, I think you'll dig this. Definitely an adult book, uh, but was very, very pleasantly surprised. It is a thriller uh, that keeps you guessing all the way to the end. So if you're looking for something uh, different, non-superhero, you should check this out. Uh, a couple other traits that came out this week worth mentioning. Uncanny X-Force Volume 1, The Apocalypse Solution, uh, written by Rick Reminder. This is our best-selling X title in the store. Uh, and we're out, of the, we're out of the issues that make up this first arc, so now is the time to jump on board with Uncanny X-Force Volume 1 and see what everyone is talking about. Reminder is doing an incredible job on Uncanny X-Force. And then finally... Oh. With your knees, not with your back. The new Teen Titans Omnibus... <clears throat> by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. Uh, this collects a ton of comics. The first 20 issues of the Noon Teen Titans Volume 1, um, plus D DC Comics Presents number 26, and the four-issue miniseries Tales of the New Teen Titans, plus introduction from Wolfman and a bunch of other bonus stuff. Uh, it's just incredible. Uh, one of the seminal runs of 80s comics uh, that brought DC kind of to the same playing field as Marvel as far as realism in their comics. <coughs> So check this one out. All right, we want to take a couple minutes and mention our picks for uh, the new DC 52, the books that we're looking forward to the most. And let me preface this by saying I am honestly looking forward to every one of these books that's coming out. Uh, there is something, something to look forward to in each one of them. But personally, there are about, well, we're only ha we only have time for like five because <laughs> we're running <laughs> behind here. So we're just going to name our, our top five. And I'm going to go in from from number one to number five. Uh, the book that I am looking forward to the most is Batman number one by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Snyder has done an, an amazing job on Detective Comics, on American Vampire, on his creator-owned series Severed, and I cannot wait to see what he does with Bruce Wayne as Batman. 
The artwork by Capullo, the preview pages that I've seen, look spectacular. I mean, this is a guy who is a protege of Todd McFarlane. He did Spawn for a number of years. He's been almost an image exclusive you know, for the last 15 years. He hasn't done much Marvel or DC stuff. So his Batman preview pages have looked phenomenal. Cannot wait for Batman number one. Oh, we're going back and forth. Sure. Awesome. All right. Um, my not, in no particular order. My one of the ones I'm looking really forward to is Demon Knights. It's a medieval series set uh, back in the medieval period of the, the uh, DC universe. You've got Etrigan the Demon and Chainmail. You've got uh, Madame Xanadu and other long-lived DC mystical characters. And it's written by Paul Cornell, who did uh, the Knight and Squire series and the old Captain Britain and MI13 series. And I just am very excited to check it out. We're going to stay in the Bat universe, and uh, i got to go with Batgirl number one as one of my top five. Sorry. And you, can, right. you can have that one, too, if you want to. <laughs> Written by Gail Simone, art by Artie and Saif, and uh, some other guy. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Covers by Adam Hughes. You know, sold me right there. But this is the one that fans are most divided on, I think. They're, they want to see what happens, how Barbara gets from being Oracle, from being paralyzed from the waist down in the wheelchair, to back as Batgirl. And Gail Simone has promised that we're going to see that, that the killing joke did happen. In fact, there's a preview of Batgirl number one floating around online that shows flashbacks to the killing joke. So how's Simone going to pull it off? We know that she loves Barbara, that she loves the character. She's written her as Oracle for years. So to see Gail Simone write Barbara Gordon as Batgirl... It's just too good to pass up. And also too good to pass up is anything by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning, which is why one of my picks is Resurrection Man. Uh, Resurrection Man's about a fourth-tier DC hero. Basically, every time he dies, when he comes back, he has a different set of superpowers. And I just, I love him. Well, I don't love him. <laughs> I, his appearances lately have been interesting and good. But I love Abnett and Lanning's stuff. Uh, they've written Heroes for Hire, Guardians of the Galaxy, pretty much the entire Marvel uh, space universe for the last five years. And I'm very excited to see what they do with a character where they can do something different every time. Aquaman number one, written by Salvation of DC, Jeff Johns, <laughs> and art by Ivan Rice, a collaborator with Jeff Johns on a number of things, including Blackest Night, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no one's been able to pull off a decent Aquaman since Peter David's run, and even back then, a lot of people didn't give Aquaman the time of day. He was a founding member of the Justice League, He's been around in DC continuity in the DC universe forever and ever. Now this is the new 52. Who knows what we're going to see. But Johns has worked miracles with Green Lantern and with The Flash uh, and with all the work that he's done in the last 10 years or so at DC Comics. So uh, I would say that's up there with Justice League. Aquaman is probably the book that most people are looking forward to, and I'm one of them. Julie Schwartz always tells a story about the idea behind the Justice League being that his kids or some neighborhood kids wanted to pick up all the different superheroes but couldn't afford them. So you have the Justice League where you get out all the heroes you want for 10 cents or 15 cents. And that is That's what, not what we're charging. That's not <laughs> what we're charging. But new Justice League Dark gives you Deadman, Zatanna, Constantine, uh, Madame Xanadu, and all oh, the Enchantress, and Shade the Changing Man. Now, I would easily have picked up a Deadman series, a Zatanna series, or a Constantine series. So I'm more than happy to pick them all up in one book. Finally for me, and again, I could go on and on, but i got to go with Action Comics number 1 by Grant Morrison and Rags Morales. I, I, well, I will admit, Morrison is hit or miss with me, more miss than hit, but I think that he's going to bring his A-game to Action Comics. Uh, I've read some of his new books, Super Gods, and he hits the nail on the head with a lot of points about comic book characters and their role in society and, and their place in history, uh, and that they need to be larger than life. So handing the reins of... Reboot, or relaunching Superman over to Grant Morrison I think was a bold move by DC uh, but I think it's going to pay off and the artwork by Rags Morales again the preview pages that we've seen has been, have been excellent this is the guy that did uh, Identity Crisis with Brad Meltzer a number of years ago so really Morrison is one of those wild cards and I, I think part of me just wants to check it out to see what crazy stuff he's going to do so can't wait for Action Comics number one and my final pick, it's no secret I'm a huge Dick Grayson fan, so Nightwing is going to be awesome. Uh, it's written by Kyle Higgins, who did uh, Gates of Gotham, which was really exceptionally good. Well, I'm sorry, he penned Gates of Gotham, Gotham from that other guy you like. A Plot by Scott Snyder. A Plot by Scott Snyder. But uh, Nightwing, it looks like the Bat Universe is going to be seeing some shuffling. The, obviously, cramming the entirety of the DC continuity into the last five years means the Robins get interesting. So I kind of want to see what happened to Dick, and it looks like they're going to go back and exploring some of his time with Haley Circus and going back to his family in the past, and I can't wait to see it. But all in all, I, I think we're both on the same page in that we can't wait to see 
all of these 50. There, there's not a book on this list of the new 52 that I don't want to check out. Uh, but those were just our, our top five for me, top five for Josh. And, you know, it all starts today. It starts with Justice League number one. And then next Wednesday, we'll see the first wave of new DC 52 number ones. And we hope that you'll be here to join us. Thanks for watching.